Hey YouTube, Andrew here, a guy with a tractor. In a previous video, I promised I would do a video on hooking up the PTO shaft back on the implement and also how to slip the clutch. And I'm going to incorporate also some maintenance I'm going to do on the bush hog itself before mowing season starts. About greasing, making sure bolts are tight, checking the fluid in the uh, gearbox. So, if you want to see how I do it all, stick around. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. And click the bell notification button for updates on future videos and stick around. So, my bush hog's been sitting outside all winter. This is how I store it. Uh, take the PTO shaft off and set a five gallon bucket over the gearbox. So, I literally just hooked this thing up and brought it up here. As you can see, yeah, there's still water on it. Um, but that keeps water from just beating down on this all winter and water freezing on it. So um, one thing we want to do is check our level on our oil and we're good there. Um, one other thing I like to do is actually look down at the oil. You can see it through the sight glass, but you can't really see what color it is. So we're going to want to, I'm going to pull out the spill plug and just take a, take a look at it. Let's see, Get down in there and see what color it is. Oh yeah, still good and clear. So that's what we want. We don't want a milky color, which signifies that water's gotten in there or something. If water's gotten in there, you're gonna wanna drain all the fluid out or the, uh, the gear oil and change it. So this plug is actually a pipe fitting. So, we're going to want to put some more Teflon tape back on there before we put it back down in there. So we're going to put a wrap or two of... Alright, sorry, the video cut out. Um, I got the Teflon back on the, uh, the vent cap here, put it back in. Uh, other thing I did was I wiped off the input shaft that goes into the gearbox and cleaned out the ring where the snap ring goes to hold your PTO shaft on in the event your bolt was to break. So we're gonna get that all put on, we're gonna put a little grease on this input shaft and then we'll get it slid back on and put the bolt back in. All right, so got our PTO shaft laid up here. We're gonna kinda line the holes up before we start sliding it on there. I'm gonna slide it on. If you need help lining it up, you can take a take a screwdriver and stick down in there. That was good and greased up so it went through pretty good. Now, as far as the bolt on a slip clutch, it is a, a grade eight bolt, half inch diameter. And on a shear pin, they want a grade two bolt. Um, because that's what's going to break and protect your PTO system. So we put that back on there. And there is a torque spec for this. If you look up in your owner's manual, it gives you a torque spec for all your size bolts and the different grades. On this one, it is 106 foot-pounds. So, see there, our torque wrench is already... I'm not sure up there. 106 foot pounds. So we're going to get this tightened up. And on a half inch bolt, you're using a three quarter inch wrench or three quarter inch socket and wrench here. So I'm going to get this torqued down and then we'll go back over how to, or go over, how to slip this clutch here. And we'll have to move the tripod to use this wrench in here. Okay, so this is the owner's manual for the, for the bush hog, rush cutter, rotary cutter, whatever you want to call it. And there's a page in all of my manuals that I have. It says torque specs. You look up right there, half inch, 
a 13 universal national coarse thread we'll find a grade 8 bolt you'll see 106 pounds so if you ever got a question about how much you're supposed to torque your bolts to look in your owner's manual and there'll be a page on torque specs so the first thing we want to do before we slip this clutch is we want to make some marks on it that way we know that it actually it actually slipped marking right here is not going to do it you've got to do it down here on the actual the clutch itself so i got a silver paint pen which is going to work great and i'm just going to reach in here and make a line on all three pieces so that way we know when that that piece is actually shifting um, now we got to loosen up all these bolts around here. That way this allows us to slip. Um, these are metric sizes. Um, this side is a 16 and this other side is a 17. So we're going to get these broken loose a little bit. Do three turns on each. Don't smush your fingers there. One, two, three. And this little plate on the back is going to spring out. It's called a Bellevue spring. One, two, All right, so this one we'll maybe a little bit more on this one. You just kind of want to keep that, that gap even around through there. So now what we want to do is so our line right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook the PTO shaft up to the tractor and Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off a couple of times. What we want that to do is that initial shock to spin this and break it, those two discs free. So if you hit something, it allows the blades to, to uh, slip and actually not stick. Since this one's kept inside all winter, it should be pretty good. Um, they stay out all the time in the rain. They can rust. Those two plates will kind of fuse together. So we're going to get that hooked up and turn it on a couple times and we'll see if that moves. We may have to loosen these some more. So let's get that done and I'll bring you back in afterwards. All right, so one thing I did and I forgot to turn the camera on was I raised the bush hog up and looked underneath to make sure the blades were still, they weren't locked up or nothing. They still spun freely. I checked my, the torque on my, blade bolts, make sure they were good. I want to do all this stuff before I start kicking on the bush hog because I didn't want a blade to come flying off or something or be stuck and it cause extra vibration out there. So all the blades are free spinning. Everything's good down the bottom side. So we're going to get the tractor turned on and try to slip this clutch. So now we've got to find a mark and see if it actually slipped any. Of course, it would be on the bottom, wouldn't it? Oh. Alright, 
So, it did slip because now our mark is actually underneath this bolt right here. So, we know that all the gears are not, or all the, uh, the slip plates are free. They're not bound together. So now we have to tighten this Bellevue spring back up. And I'll bring you in closer and show you how that's done. So one thing I didn't show you all is I don't have the guard on here right now to be able to access all these bolts and stuff. So I didn't have a good place to hook my chain to. Because if I hooked it here, it slid down and I was afraid it's going to get caught by one of these bolts and, and rip it off. So I just threw a little zip tie around this piece right here for right now to to secure my safety chain while I did this adjustment. So on these bolts right here, there's not a specific torque spec for these bolts. The reason being is this spring has to have enough play in it. And there it's measured by from this face to this face, a, a gap. Look up in your owner's manual, it'll tell you what the gap needs to be. For this specific model, which is the Frontier 2060, the RC2060, it is four millimeters. So I didn't have no spacers that were four millimeters, but I got a Starrett straight edge or a little rule and some filler gauges. Now, I took my calipers and played around with it until I got it four millimeters right here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put these in here and we're going to tighten until that fits down in there. So just remember to look it up and see what your your spec is on the distance from the slip clutch to the Bellevue spring and make sure you get that distance set right. All right, so there's how you reinstall your PTO shaft onto the implement, slip your clutch, and the only other thing we're gonna do with this is we're gonna make sure our tail wheel's greased and the axle for it, and just go around and make sure all the bolts and everything are, are tight and none of them's worked loose or anything. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, click the like button, subscribe, and click the bell notification for updates on future videos. Thank you, and have a blessed day.